Hey, what's going on, Luke? And I'm here to do one of my most favorite videos to do every year, and that is my season predictions. This time we're doing season 2022. As you can tell by the title, as you can tell by the time frame, season 2022 it is. So we're going to be doing my predictions, going through the premiers, minor premiers, Dalian, Wooden Spoon, uh, Grand Finalists, all that sort of stuff. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and take a look at my predictions. So I think it's fitting that we do start off with the minor premiers and the actual premiers themselves, talk about the Grand Final, do all that sort of stuff, and then I'll get to the individual accolades. Now, I'm not going to be going through every position and going, oh yeah, this guy's going to win halfback of the year, this guy's going to win center of the year, all that sort of stuff. Then I just purely go through like the Dalio medal winner, top try scorer, top point scorer, all that sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and talk about the premiers. Uh, so this one, I feel like it is quite open in 2022. In previous years, we've seen like every year, like Storm's going to be in there, Roosters are probably going to be in there. Last year for the last couple of seasons, Penrith is in amongst that. Uh, this year we've seen, or last year we actually saw, but I think this year we're going to see some new contenders in Manly. I know they were contenders last year, but I think they're really going to step up again this year. Year. And also, they're sort of going into 2022. We know they're going to be a contender. Tommy Turbo got the Dally M. Could possibly get it this year. Is he going to be my pick? You have to wait and see. But uh, the emergence of Manly definitely wasn't there at the start of last season. Whereas this year, we're sort of expecting something from Manly. Parramatta is the same. Uh, now, speaking of Parramatta, um, I really rate them. I do like the Parramatta side. I liked what I saw last year in the finals. I liked what Mitchell Moses was doing. Dylan Brown, I think, can go to another level. Uh, you got the rest of the side. They are very solid. They haven't really lost anyone this year. And it is sort of going to be the last hurrah of this current Eel side. Losing a lot of players next year, so I can see them having a very, very big year. It feels to me like this is the sort of season where the Eels step up, and it's going to tease a lot of Eels fans. Well, I can see them getting the minor premiership, but they are going to be my picks for the minor premiers. I can see them having a really good season. Also, you got to take into account Penrith, I know if Cleary goes down injured, they're not going to win. It's as simple as that. We saw that in the trials. Parramatta pumped them in previous years. We've seen them really, really struggle as soon as Cleary's out. When Jerome Lyon was out, Burton could step in. or uh, just If, if there's a couple of players out, they can cover them. But I'm not so sure this year. They've lost a lot of players. I think they're still, on paper, going to be one of the better sides. And if everything goes to plan, they'll be right up there. But just in terms of the whole season, Melbourne are missing a lot of players towards the start of the season and then the origin point. Um, so I can see them sort of struggling a little bit in terms of points. Not in terms of like end of the season could easily win the grand final, but just in terms of them uh, missing players at key points in the season. Just in terms of minor premiership, that is, I, I think they're going to struggle a little bit. Same with the Roosters. Desco is going to be out for sure. Uh, you got Daniel Tupo's in amongst the Origin side all the time. Uh, you got Radley there as well. Sam Walker could be in the mix for Queensland. Uh, Luke Curie definitely in the mix for New South Wales. Rabbitohs have downgraded a lot. Um, there's a lot of teams who could possibly be up there, even like a shark or someone could possibly be up there. But in terms of origin, I can't really see the Eels being affected too much. Mitchell Moses is, in my opinion, like the second or third half. If Nat Glear is fit, he's definitely getting picked. Mitchell Moses doesn't even get a sniff. And, and last year, I think, sort of proved the point that maybe not quite origin level yet. I don't know. Maybe go with Adam Reynolds, but... Uh, look, I, I think they'll be fine during the origin period. I think that's why they will get the minor premiership. I don't necessarily think they'll be the best side, but just in terms of finishing first at the end of the season, I think they'll be up there. In terms of the actual grand final itself, the winners, I think we're definitely going to end up seeing the Roosters. I really think the Roosters are going to take out the whole premiership. So they are my premiers. In terms of taking on someone in the grand final, maybe Parramatta, uh, maybe Penrith. Let's go Storm though. Storm, the last hurrah. Um, with a lot of their players leaving. Um, and then also, you have the Roosters who have got all their players back. So that could be a nice little story there. Throwback to a couple of years ago when they did play in the grand final. Obviously, Roosters picked up the dub there. Are they going to do it again? I think so. I think 2022 is going to be the year of the Roosters. They were too strong last year with a shit side that I feel like having all these players back Surely they've got to be right up there. Surely they've got to they've got to win this one. Surely. Now moving on to the Dally M. Uh, this one's an interesting one because it doesn't necessarily reflect who is the best player. Um, look, in previous seasons, we've seen guys who've mostly been the best player, like Tommy Turbo was the best player, Tedesco's won it in the past, probably the best player, but we've also seen some ones like Jack White and we're like, hmm, good player, but probably wasn't the best player that year, probably not even close, so we have seen some hit and misses with the Dally M, but in terms of this year, I can easily see Turbo going back to back, I can see Tedesco having a good season, depending on when he comes back, uh, I know he's having a little bit of trouble with his knee, and that's also a reason why I didn't pick them for minor premiership, because um, I think Tedesco's sort of struggling a little bit with fitness, but um, look, if he gets going, he could be hard to stop. 
Mitchell Moses, if I'm predicting the Eels to win the minor premiership, I think Mitchell Moses is a very, very good chance. However, I can't go past Nathan Cleary this year. Um, I think Turbo and Cleary are the two real standouts on who is the best actual individual player. Um, I think Cleary, obviously, didn't win the Dallium last year, but he did win the Clive Churchill, and I think it was well-deserved. I thought Cleary really, really, you know, he really dominated that game, and he wasn't even fit. He was quite busted. A lot of the Penrith side in general was quite busted, but uh, Cleary led them around perfectly. He's had an off-season to get fit, get healthy, get ready, and uh, I'm expecting a big season from him. Whether it's him or Turbo, I don't really care. Either one of them, I can see them getting the Dallium, but a real smoker for me is Mitchell Moses, just based off if the Eels go pretty well. If as good as I'm expecting them to. Now, we're just going to go through some of the individual awards. So, I'm going to pick my rookie of the year. I'm actually going to go with the young fella from South City. I'm going to go with uh, is Ilias, uh, the halfback. I think... Out of all the guys, there is a lot of uh, a lot of good players, but a lot of the guys that you would think, like, oh, yeah, they're, they're a rookie. They're not actually in the Rookie of the Year um, category or whatever. They've played too many games. I was looking at Selwyn Cobo, and I think he's played too many games, so I don't think he's eligible for the award. Where Ilias, I don't think he's played. Even like the young fella from the Dragons, um, Amone, I could see him getting a go. But I have a feeling like a guy like Tyrell Sloan, uh, he would probably be my choice. But I have a feeling he's played too many games in first grade to actually be eligible. But you'd probably consider him a rookie, but... Ilias it is, he's coming to a Rabbitohs side I think they're going to be a massive downgrade on last year But I still think they're going to have enough to get a lot of good wins Enough that we can see uh, this young fella and go Yeah, he's, he's a decent baller, he can play pretty well um, He's not quite an Adam Reynolds, but he is a rookie and he's doing a pretty good job I think the Rabbitohs will sort of be in the eight still Sort of at least be in the mix for it And I think they'll have some really, really strong patches through the year I think they'll have some down patches But I think Ilias will have a really good season uh, Whether it translates to long-term success, I don't know But... I think in 2022, you'll have a pretty decent season. Now, I've talked about my premiers. Now, it's time to talk about the opposite end of the table. Who do I think is going to get the wooden spoon? Last year, I didn't predict the Bulldogs. Probably a lot of bias there, but a lot of people didn't predict the Bulldogs. They had some pretty decent signings on paper. Obviously, it didn't translate well. A lot of injuries throughout the year uh, and just a lot of bad play throughout the year. Um, but this year, I feel like it is quite open. You look at teams like the Tigers, teams like the Dragons, teams like the Cowboys. Speaking of the Cowboys, they are my pick for the wooden spoon. Now, I feel like a little while ago, if, you'd, if I'd done this video maybe like a month ago, probably would have been talking about the Tigers, but... I've seen enough from their trials. Uh, I hate to go off the trials, but um, just with Jackson Hastings, um, if Luke Brooks can find any form, they might be okay. They've got a few decent signings. They just need a little bit of confidence, the Tigers, because I think they've got a lot of players who are rocks and diamonds. They just need to get going. Now, I don't think they're going to have a very good season, to be honest, but uh, just in terms of the wooden spoon, I think they will avoid it. Usually, they sort of come about ninth. I can see them coming way further, um, but I think the Cowboys are going to be the ones to get the wooden spoon. Lots of good players on paper. Obviously, the hammer moving to fullback. It could be an absolute master stroke could be an absolute disaster as well we don't know still a lot of question marks in particular about the halves scott drinkwater has been one of the best players for them the last couple of seasons and he finds himself on the outer at least by the trials they've been going with tom dearden and chad townsend chad townsend the same dude who couldn't even get into the side at cronulla got kicked to the curb to the warriors ended up getting injured very early on and so had a huge money deal at the cowboys so he's definitely going to be playing but he doesn't really have the form to back up him becoming the club captain. So him and Tamalolo, two guys who are the captain, two guys who are on huge money, and two guys who haven't really been in great form. Now Tamalolo, I think he gets a bad rap uh, just purely based off the fact that he's on huge money and the coach doesn't know what to do with him, especially with the game evolving. Uh, but the rest of the side, though, doesn't strike me with a lot of hope. You see a lot of guys who are, they're all right in their day, but that's about it. They're just all right. Look at their forward pack. You got know, Jordan McLean is, is bog average. You've got Jason Tamalolo, but you don't really have much else in that four pack. So um, you, you look at the four pack, you look at the halves, you look at the backs. They don't really have much to work with apart from the hammer. And Kyle Felt is pretty decent as well. Val Holmes is going into the centers, which I think is a good move. So they've done a bit of a swap fullback to center, but um, just the whole side, it doesn't strike me as a side that is going to do much in 2022. Hard to say for sure if they're going to get the wooden spoon, but they are my pick this year. Now, we just got done talking about who I think is going to get the wooden spoon. The next two categories are going to be talking about are teams who I think are going to have the biggest rise and who's going to be the biggest disappointment of 2022. Now, I did touch on one of the teams earlier. I did talk about the West Tigers. I think they're going to be the biggest disappointment. Now, you might be thinking... Look, how can they be a disappointment? They haven't made the eight in how many years? 10 years or so, probably longer. Well, my reason for that is they've made some pretty decent signings, at least on paper. Gildart looks pretty good. Jackson Hastings looks pretty good. But they still have lots of Rocks and Diamonds players. But the expectations from Tigers fans, and even just some fans in general, they've seen them. Uh, even a team like the Dragons, we've seen them play in the trials, and you're like, oh, they're actually, they actually look okay. Tigers beat the Roosters. Even last year they did this. They, they win a game in the trials, 
fans go absolutely nuts and they say, this is the year, we're going to make the top eight. And I feel like with Hastings, I think he does look pretty decent. Uh, he won a man of steel in England. Is he going to live up to that sort of hype? I don't think so, but... Uh, look, I think he is going to be a great signing for them. I think once Adam Dewey's back, I think he'll be good for them. Um, but I think the fact that Dewey's out for quite a while, I think it is going to hurt them. I think just the side in general still isn't very good. Uh, next year, they've got a couple decent players coming. But uh, this year, I just I can't see them doing too much. But I can still see the fans being super hyped and, and thinking they're going to make the top eight. And I can see them falling pretty quickly down the ladder. And then, obviously, major disappointments. Therefore, they are the biggest disappointments. I, I could easily list the Bulldogs there as well. A lot of hype about them. I'm hoping, personally, they're going to be the biggest risers. Uh, wooden Spoon last year. Probably, if, if, even if they don't come last, that's probably the biggest rise because they got the Wooden Spoon. But they made a host of signings. In the trials, look absolutely dog shit, let's be real. They look terrible, but... As I've said, trials don't really mean too much. It's kind of what I was saying with the Tigers. Uh, the fans really sort of play into these trials and look at them and they say, geez, uh, Roosters lost. They're going to be terrible this year. Oh, Penrith got towed up by the Eels. They're going to be terrible. I wouldn't read it too much into the trials. We'll see how they go after. Maybe 10 or so rounds you can get a pretty good gauge on whether a team is clicking or not. Will the Tigers click? I don't know. Will the Bulldogs click? I don't know. But in terms of the biggest risers, I've gone with the Bulldogs. They are my side. I'm probably very biased with that one. Last year, I thought they were going to be the biggest risers as well, and that didn't happen. Uh, this year, I think they will be, though. Too many good players coming to the side for them to not win a significant amount of games more than last year. Meanwhile, the Tigers, I feel like, are going to be the same disappointment as they were last year. Whether that makes them a disappointment, I don't know, because it's pr probably pretty fitting from where they've been the last couple of years. But just in terms of the hope that they bring to all the fans and then what they end up delivering, um, I just can't not put them as a disappointment. Now, I've talked about all the team awards that I'm giving out, or at least the team predictions. Now, it's time to move on to the individual ones. Now, I've already talked about my Dalian medal winner. I've already talked about my Rookie of the Year. It's time to go and talk about the point scorers and try scorers. Now, I feel like it's going to be exactly the same as last year. I think Jason Saab's going to be top try scorer, and I think Ruben Garrett's going to be the top point scorer. Basically, I think Manly going to have another good season. Is Turbo going to win the Daly M? Maybe. Uh, but whether he does or not, they're going to be scoring a lot of points. He's going to be right up there for top try scorer. Ruben Garrick is. Jason Saab is. I just went with Jason Saab because he's also got that added a uh, little bit of height they can kick to him. And also, he's got the intercepts as well. So, I feel like Saab's got that little bit extra edge over Garrick in terms of scoring tries. I think Garrick's a better winger. But, uh, look, I think Garrick's going to get top point scorer. Uh, obviously, goal kicks a lot. He's going to score a lot of tries. It makes sense. It's kind of like how Jared Croker, also how Hazemel Mazzari used to win top point scorer every year. Because they'll score in heaps of tries. And they'll also kick him lots of goals. So, um, yeah, Garrick, I think, is a shoe in for this one. As long as he doesn't get like a season ending injury, um, I think he's easily going to get it. And I think Jason Saab's going to be uh, your top try scorer. Alex Johnson's always up there, but I don't think the Rabbitohs are going to score as many points now that Adam Reynolds is there. I think they'll score points, and it will be down Johnson's side, but just in terms of compared to previous years, I don't think it's going to happen as much. So that's basically all my predictions out of the way. We have one final one, though, and that is State of Origin, an early State of Origin prediction. Uh, it is sort of hard to talk about State of Origin this early on, but at the same time, it's State of Origin. We're always going to be talking about it. People are predicting signs literally the minute the last season finishes. So, um, look, in terms of who's going to win, I think New South Wales is going to win again. They have been winning a lot recently. Obviously, Queensland won a couple years ago, the big upset one. But apart from that, it's been all New South Wales. And I think it's going to continue to be all New South Wales, especially this season. Even going forward the next couple of seasons, I think New South Wales are going to be shoe-ins. Um, in terms of a 3-0, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it'll be a 2-1. That's just how Origin seems to go. Usually a team, whether the series wrapped up, whether the series is on the line, a team always seems to pick up at least one victory. Even the best Queensland side, I think, only did the clean sweep maybe once. Maybe twice, but I'm pretty sure it was only one. So, yeah, it is very hard to get a clean sweep. Even if Queensland don't have the best side, they still have a lot of elite players who are going to be playing with a lot of passion. So, I think they'll be able to snag um, at least one victory. But New South Wales Blues win 2-1 to one in the State of Origin Series. And in terms of play of the series, I'll just go with Nathan Cleary. I feel like that's a pretty easy one. Anyways, those are my predictions for season 2022. Hopefully, my predictions go quite well. Hopefully, you're not sitting here at the end of the year, maybe even in a couple of years, and looking back and, and looking at like my Eels prediction and being like, holy shit, Mitchell Moses had the worst year. Uh, he spent the whole year injured, and you had them as the minor premiers. You had bloody Roosters winning the premiership. They didn't even make the eight. Uh, hopefully, there's none of that sort of stuff, and hopefully, we're talking about some of my great predictions, but let me know in the comment section below. What are your predictions? We can have a little bit of fun with this one. We have a little bit of a discussion. 
go ahead, leave in the comments section. You don't have to do all of the ones that I've done. You don't have to touch on rookie or of the year or that sort of stuff. But at least leave who you think is going to uh, win the premiership, who's going to be minor premiers, that sort of stuff. Dally M is a good one to do. Let me know in the comments section below what are your predictions for 2022. Anyways, that's my predictions over and done with. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to use the notification bell. Don't rely on sub boxes. Really don't. They, they are quite useless sometimes. Uh, use the notification bell. Never miss any of my videos, including streams as well. Don't miss any of my streams and videos. Going to be streaming quite a bit during the NRL season. Also, go ahead and give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. My face is Mr. Luke, but everything else, including Snapchat, including TikTok, is Mr. Luke and YT. So go ahead and give me a follow. Give me an ad. And stay tuned for more content on the channel. I'll see you for the next one. Hopefully, we're talking about the Bulldogs winning a premiership too. If you're coming back, hopefully, it's for a Bulldogs premiership win. <laughs> Anyways, see you.